My friends over at Roosevelt's, they make the most incredible shirts. And and they they have everything from Disney to The Office to Jurassic Park, WWE, and everything pop culture. Nickelodeon, Nicktoons. My son and I fight over the shirts that we get shipped to us. Use promo code SWOGGLE. Save 20% off any order from button-ups to hoodies to activewear, everything. Guys, go to roosevelts.com. R-S-V-L-T-S dot com. Use promo code SWOGGLE. Save yourself 20% on everything. R-S-V-L-T-S dot com. You're listening to the Major Pod Network, the only place where your favorite toy store, card shop, arcade, theme park, and arena are all on the same block. Scratch that major itch. Guys, welcome to another episode of Going Postal, and this, this is going to be a good one. Like they all are, obviously, because it's me, and also my riding partner, George, Jeff, Keith, Richard, Bruce, John, George, now that would be Paul, confusing. and Ringo. That's the Beatles. I know the Beatles. I know music, George. Guys, this is going postal. And if you didn't know by now, now you know. I think that's a that's a if you don't know, now you know. Who's that? This this is the longest. How who's did that? you get how did you sidebar on the intro to the podcast, Dylan? But who's that? Who's the if you don't know, now you know? Uh I'm pretty sure that's Biggie Smalls. It's notorious B. I. G. Ah. This is going postal exclusively on the Major Pod Network. And that's George. Yeah, I'm I'm George and uh <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this this episode is going to be great. Uh it is Dylan sitting down with one of his best friends, the most professional wrestler Brian Myers. Uh, I also, I guess, kind of our boss now, being that we're on the Major Pod Network. No, 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 That's no, no. A fun I don't have oh, bosses yeah. anymore. I don't have bosses. I got fired, and now I'm an independent contractor. Swoggle uh, well, Postal Industries LLC has no bosses. Oh, ooh, love that. Postal uh, Industries, but we're four bosses. We're all four bosses. It's like Bowser. And why are we on Mario again? And it's Mario and Bowser in the sweet flying clown thing. And Birdo, man, Caruse is Birdo. Caruse is definitely Birdo. <laughs> that's the so ma- making a note now. That's the social clip for the week. Caruso is definitely Birdo. Uh, you would be like, I, I feel you. I feel like Bobby Orlando is baby Bowser. Like Bowser Jr. Okay. Uh, Bowser's kind of like, I feel Bowser's big, but I feel like he's also shown to be too big. Like Mario 1, he's not huge like he is in like, say the upcoming Mario flick. Okay. You know what I mean? Like height wise? They, so they, I could be Bowser. His exact uh, proportions in, in relation... Uh, to Mario have changed over the years. In, yeah, in Mario why is 64, that? he I have no idea. Because you know what it is? I, honestly, it's probably because they're trying to make it in a, more dramatic for certain games. Like in Mario 64, he's huge. I, okay, so I've still I've never played Mario 64 ever. Oh, you got to. Ever. It's fantastic. I tried it and I didn't like it. It was too like weird 3D fl- free free flow. I don't know. I didn't like it. But let's okay. say no. You know what? Let's say I'm Baby Bowser. Bobby Orlando is Big Bowser. 
Caruse is Birdo. Who would you be? You're you're delegating this, so you got to pick who I am. I don't want to make you Super Mario two, like that frog guy. I don't want to make you that. I could see you being like Waluigi. You have a very Waluigi build. I feel that. Okay, I'll take it. I, I yeah, take it. that's you're that's my go to character uh, that I pick every time in every game is Waluigi. So. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel yeah, you're the Waluigi. Uh that's that's it. There we go. That's Postal Industries. We're all bosses. All right. I love that. Guys, this episode uh, there is may be some discrepancy Rosenthal. on who's actually a boss in that, but yeah, I like it. Who I like where your head's at. Well, I, I just think that there there's like the sub bosses for the worlds, but Bowser's like the boss boss. So Bobby Orlando is our boss. I mean, according to you, technically, you should be Bowser. And then Bobby Orlando not. should be Bowser but Jr. I get, yeah, but I... Guys, I don't know how we got on that, but this episode is brought <laughs> to you by Roosevelt's Clothing. I just received another care package from my friends over at Roosevelt's. And it is Ooh. the Disney 100 series. Ooh. It is incredible, and I haven't been able to unbox it yet because it's not available to the public yet. But guys, head over to Roosevelt's.com. That is R-S-V-L-T-S dot com. Use promo code SWOGGLE and save yourself 20%. I was on the Jericho Cruise, George, and I saw... Oh, yeah. We got to talk about that. Yeah, talk about Jericho Cruise. Oh. I was on the Jericho Cruise, and I saw, I want to say, at least 15 Roosevelt shirts. I had the spot I with Brad Williams. I 100% believe that. I was had the spot with Brad Williams. I was I was repping my Roosevelt swim shorts. I wore at least one, sometimes three p- pieces of Roosevelt's clothing a day on the Jericho cruise because Damn. it is the most comfortable, just best fitting from lightweight new flex button-ups to sweet swim shorts, everything. Guys, Roosevelt's I'm saying they've got a little bit of everything. Every, literally everything. Their new performance hoodies are the most comfortable hoodie I have ever. I don't like usually soft style, like like the athletic style, but this doesn't. Okay. Uh, this doesn't uh, like form to my belly, which I really like. I hate soft. Okay, hate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I they're a little clingy. The, yeah, because it clings to my belly and it shows my belly button, and I don't like that. Roosevelt's does not. Roosevelt's does not show my belly button. That's a good plug. That's a, I gotta check that out. I gotta check that out. The performance hoodies are probably my favorite piece of Roosevelt's besides the new flex button ups. So let's do a little bit of follow up here. Last episode, we broke down all of your appearances in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Uh, for me, on my end, what I saw, pretty good response. We got some buzz going on in the in the old Dylan Postel Discord. Got a lot of tags on social media. People uh Posted about their favorite moments about you in Royal Rumbles. What did you see? I saw a lot of people just enjoying and going back and like almost, oh, I forgot you were in this one because I watched it when I was a kid. And I was like, so there's nothing more that I love slash secretly hate because it makes me feel really old. Then, man, I watched that when I was a kid. It's like, Guys, I'm 36, but then it, cause then it makes me feel 36. It doesn't make me – like in my crazy mind, I still think I'm 26. Yeah, I – that it, Life doesn't work that way. No, and it's a shame that it doesn't. I just, I just wish that I – like I wish that there was a point where you could just be like, hey, I'm good here. I want to just, just stay this age. <laughs> like the movie Click. Man, Click. Yeah, but Click's a double-edged sword, though, because then if you go forward, you can't go back. Yeah, he, he went back. No, I thought the whole point of it was that you can only go forward. I thought he saw his death and then went backwards. I gotta rewatch Click. I only re- Click. I only watched that movie. Oh, like that two that times, is a and it was sad, a long time ago. That there's a there's a spot in there that's like I almost have to fast forward through because it's so sad. That I do remember. I do remember that it is yeah. a very sad movie. I uh, but guys, it. listen. <laughs> we got to get these plugs in. At Going Postal on all forms of social media. At Dylan Postal on all at forms of social Postal, media. Thanks for George. At Going Postal's social media 
has been on fire, follow it at going postal on all forms of social. And, and uh, we're just going to do more. We're gonna it's get. Going, we're, we're just, just gonna, gonna start it. I, it's gonna grow. We got a lot more things coming. What do you say? A lot of more things coming. What coming down the pike, baby? Coming down the pike, like a turnpike, you know. But yeah, yeah, go for I got real, it. guys. At going postal on all socials. If you listen just to the audio version, uh, we would love you to check out the video version as well. It's Dylan Postal on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Dylan Postal on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Would you love you to leave a comment? Smash that notification bell, as we always say. Um, there are people that just watch, and there are people that Taking just listen. My job. I don't even have We'd to love you to do both. Especially, I feel like the interview episodes are especially, like, if you listen to it in the car, I, I it's awesome. But just, like, watching it, too, just for self-popping reasons, <laughs> like, little things that Hawkins and I or Ethan Page and I just laugh over. It's so stupid, but it's so fun, I feel. A little peek behind the curtain here. I actually, during the Ethan Page uh, uh, interview, I actually had to cut some of the video version out because they were both laughing so hard and so loud that because the interview was done over Zoom, the audio was just silent. It had muted both of them. So in an effort so that you guys weren't just listening or watching dead air, I actually had to cut some of that out. So you didn't miss anything content-wise. But if you needed a reason to go and watch the video version, just know that there are so many segments where they are just <laughs> laughing and there's no noise. <laughs> and there's so many parts where like the volume peaked so much because they were both laughing so hard that I had to like manually lower. And today is no different. Editing no. this ep- uh, this interview with you and Brian, I actually think it may even be worse than that. It, <laughs> worse than Ethan Page because there's so much more history there that there's so many more stories. It's even louder than it was with Ethan Page. So I was worried about this one because I just didn't – so I feel that I, I never want to be too – old school Howard Stern. And what I mean by that, and it's not about like the rated R sex capades and that it's about talking over people. Howard Stern in his old days had the, the uh, always talked over his guests a lot. And that's like a weird fear of mine. And, but yet I still catch myself doing it. And it's like, Oh no, stop, just stop talking. And so I literally will just, and I hate the thought because it's now always on my mind about doing it. And uh, so it's always in the back of my mind. And hopefully in the Hawkins one, I didn't do it too much. But it's it was such a fun episode. Such a fun episode. And uh, I, I really hope people enjoy it. Because there's a lot, like, there's stories that we've talked about so much. And there's a lot of stuff that we've never talked about and never revealed. And, like, I, I, I just feel people will enjoy two pals talking. Uh, two two pals yucking, right? Yucking it up. Yucking it up. Just just a couple of pals yucking it up. Uh, so I also share in that struggle. Uh, how you feel about talking over people? Because uh, you know, two people hosting a podcast uh, that happens a lot. So I always it's something I I even did it earlier on. I struggle with that a lot, and I struggle with it on this podcast. I struggle with it on the Game Marks podcast. Uh, and it's something that, uh, you just kind of got to grow into. I I feel like I worry about it less and less every time, but, uh, listen, before we get into it, I I think, I think staying on that real quick, I, I think I worry about it because we both know my memory and I'm like secretly worried about, oh my God, you're going to forget this moment. Oh my God. You're going to forget what you're about to say. And so you have to say it right away. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I I'll give you that. My, I think that's why I do it in my mind. That makes sense, though. Hey, Landon. Landon moment oh. of the week. Landon running. Happening now. Ready for this? Hi, my friend. Can I get my hearing aid, please? I literally just realized I don't have my hearing aid in. And I uh, guys, before we started recording, 
before we started recording, I thought George was really, really low and using his old as George some peek behind the curtain. George sometimes has his mic on a wrong setting. Uh so sometimes we can't hear him. And I thought I had him he was really, really low. It's probably because I didn't have my hearing aid in. <laughs> Uh, like, people oh, you sound again. great now, George. <laughs> would, would you like me to cut this out? We were talking about what? how you don't like to feel like you're 36, but uh, we're good. We're all good. right. Oh, uh, you sound so great. <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad that you can hear me now. A uh, c- couple things so before we now. get into <laughs> couple things before we get into talking about the Jericho cu- cru- uh, the Jericho cruise. I can't talk. Uh, we got to plug twitch.tv slash Dylan Postel. Guys, we got to plug week. swaggleauction.com and oh. we got to plug dylanpostel.com and prowrestlingtees.com slash swaggle. Dylan, tell us about all of those great things. Uh, so Twitch, let's talk about Twitch first off. Twitch, we had such a discussion in the Discord about the Mario games. One, two, and three. And like arguments, arguments. And people are... Yeah, they, they're they're telling me because I prefer Mario Two, obviously, and they're telling me it's the remake of Yo Gabba Gabba or whatever the stupid game. Doki, was Doki Doki Panic. I don't care. I don't care anymore. I'm sick of it. Uh, it's the one and only time Yo Gabba Gabba is ever going to come up on this podcast. <laughs> I'll have you know. <laughs> Coming to you next week on uh, Going Postal the Wiggles. Dylan sits down <laughs> with the Wiggles. Dylan reviews Yo Gabba Gabba. <laughs> but um, for real, it uh, so I last last week on Twitch, I played through Mario Two, and let me tell you, George, thank God for an emulator because I could okay. save my progress yeah. as we went. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made it. Like I, I. I would. I I was getting so frustrated. I've I had my controller like this at one point, audio and visual podcast, and I felt myself trying to wishbone it. Like, and at one point, like I was like, "But what if this snaps? Then you're out fifty dollars on a controller. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't. That's not. It's not worth it. I promise you. I'm getting so mad at that stupid game, but I still love Mario Two so much. Uh. This week, we're going to get another – we're playing Warzone. We're getting a win in Warzone. Okay. Another solo okay. win. Uh, I like to switch between Warzone and uh, a retro game and or maybe throw in a Dead by Daylight and then a retro week. I think I'm going to uh, go with that. And the retro games to me – so I'm not – I don't think I'll be ever one to like play a new game. Because I just can't get into them as much. Like retro games to me have to be something that I've played in the past and can really bring nostalgia back to me. And playing Double Dragon Six would have no nostalgia to me. Um, okay, okay. You know what I mean? It's just it. it it's just, to me then it's just an old game. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. And I just, I don't know. I, I, but yeah, well, I think we're going to go back and forth. Uh, um, we're going to go back to Jackbox on Wednesdays, the off, the non whatnot Wednesdays uh, for Twitch. We're going to go back to playing Jackbox with the group. I, we always have such a blast playing Jackbox with the, uh, the subscribers. It's always a good time. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, tell the good people at home about swaggleauction.com. So, Everyone is opening a my name auction site. So I said to my pal George, I said, hey, can we buy swaggleauction.com? Even though I still get it confused and have to ask, is it swaggle auction or swaggle auctions? It is swaggleauction.com. In partnership with Whatnot, guys, if you have not yet signed up for Whatnot, and you need to because we are having fun. Head over to swaggleauction.com, sign up, and you get a free $10 to use on your first auction. It can be on my streams. It can be on the Major Pod streams, the Pro Wrestling Tease streams, Ethan Page's huge streams. Any whatnot stream, you get a free $10 on your first purchase. It's absolutely free and awesome. We, uh, man, 
the last whatnot stream, we had a Chase Jericho going for an absolute steal. We had some fun ones. And now our next one, which would be, let me get it. Our next whatnot auction will be February 22nd. That is Ash Wednesday. We will celebrate Ash Wednesday with a huge whatnot stream. That's so, tonight. 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 I, I literally just realized that tonight I have to do a whatnot. That means I need to make my list. We're going to have a signed Jake the Snake Roberts figure that I got in person at Midwest All-Star Wrestling. Landon came up with the idea. He goes, Jake Roberts is here. We need a signed figure for whatnot. I said, yes, we do. Hell yes. All right. Uh, Dylan, are you ready? Are you ready to throw it on over? Two. Well, well, we could either throw it on over or you can give us a little recap of the Jericho Cruise. I leave that up to you. Let's throw it on over and let's chat about the Jericho Cruise next week. Okay. All right. We'll jog next your memory step. for Jericho Cruise. I got yep. I'll take some some notes on things that I saw happening on social media. And the and reason we'll, uh, is is because I believe by next episode the video diary will be out. Ooh, okay. There we go. And we can talk all things video diary. Uh why there was much, so much footage from me on the video diary. Yeah. Oh my you know what? Man, next week might be a heartfelt one. Oh so spoiler alert, ladies and gentlemen, in two weeks from today, our next episode, which will be a a uh a just a regular going postal, not an interview episode. It'll be about a certain topic, but we'll cover the Jericho Cruise. It's Dylan, going. I think it should just be an episode about the Jericho Cruise. Let's do an episode just about the... You know what? We're deciding now. Just about the Jericho Cruise. Uh, it's going to be heartfelt. There's going to be... It's going to be... Something I've never talked about. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Well, with that, it is now time for us to hop on over to Dylan sitting down with the most professional wrestler, one Brian Myers. Mad Cat Beard Care, they are the absolute best. They make my beard feel soft, silky, smooth. But not only that, they've been a one-man show since 2019. Mad Cat Beard Care uses a portion of sales to care for local stray cats, cover their medical bills, find safe spaces, and forever homes. Their products are made to order with vitamins and all natural oils that promote strong, healthy hair and moisturize your skin as well. Mad Cat Beard Care has exclusive scents for myself as well as other wrestlers such as a childhood favorite of mine, Delirious. Ring of Honor legend with his lime and French vanilla scent that makes my beard smell and feel amazing. And of course, make sure to try my exclusive scent swaggled with nuts of lavender and sage. And guys, make sure to use promo code SWAGGLED to save 15% on your whole order at madcatbeardcare.com. And remember, the Mad Cat makes a happy beard. Hey guys, so after watching back the Brian Myers interview, I realized it wasn't capturing my camera for a good amount of the beginning. That's because, as I've talked about previously, I get very distracted if my camera is on the screen and that I'm always adjusting the mic or my hair or everything. So I get very distracted. So I always try to hide my view. With that, I always forget on Zoom, if I hide my view, it hides the view of it on the recording as well. So hopefully it's still enjoyable. Uh, hopefully you guys still love it. I feel it's a really, really fun, um, lighthearted interview that covers multiple 
parts of our friendship and our lives. So hopefully you still like it and you can like, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button and smash the notification bell, even though I messed up on my end once again. Enjoy. Guys, another edition of Small Talk. This one might be possibly my favorite. I've had Colt Cabana. I've had Rene Paquette. I've had Wee Man. I've had Lead Muppeteer, Bill Beretta. But now I have a major brother, an edgehead, the biggest loser in WWE history, a award-winning book forward author, and uh, a pretty good pal of mine. Hi, Brian. Hey, Dylan. It's me, Brian from Wrestling. <laughs> so, <laughs> What's up? Starting, that could be my favorite thing because that's exactly how uh, uh, Johnny Dango Curtis still texts me to this day. <laughs> hey, it's John from uh, Wrestling. <laughs> to be fair, I think Gallo started that. As Drew from Wrestling? Yeah, he was, hi. It's Drew <laughs> from Wrestling. And then if we're being full full disclosure, it might be a like a almost like a borderline Brad J rib. Look, it's me, Brad. From wrestling. <laughs> that because might no. <laughs> that might be like the, the <laughs> that might be the real origins of it, but don't quote me on that. Yeah. But I've I've been using that for uh, over well over 10 years. Try from Red Oh <laughs> <laughs> It makes the Brad yeah. J one makes the most yeah. sense with that because, like, I mean, especially to like, if he reached out to me because I don't have a relationship <laughs> with a Brad J. Like, that's probably what he would say to you in real life. Yeah, right? hey, yeah. Brad J. You know, uh, because <laughs> there's so many others. Oh shit! Uh, oh Jesus! Of course, now my son, my great son, calls me during this award-winning interview. My, my buddy Landon. What um, you doing? Thank you for doing this. I know I, I texted you a very businessy message because you're you're booked solid these days. I, I read like two seconds of that. I was driving. I said, "What the hell is he saying?" I just called you. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't, wasn't having it. But I. Uh, yeah. This is you're you're the first one of the year. You're the first one of the new kind of uh, rebrand, rebuild, re uh, reinvigoration of the YouTube channel of Going Postal. And uh, that's also going possible in itself is thanks to you and Matt and Mark kind of believing in me in uh, in the podcast world and in the whole show. So thank you for doing that. I've had a lot thanks. of fun myself and George. Great. I've had a really, really good time doing that. I love to hear that. That's awesome, man. Here's my first thing. George once asked me is how did you and I become so close? And that was something that people asked me. Uh, the first kind of going postal episode of, you know, how Dylan Matt met Matt and Brian. And the only thing I ever really tell people is it was Punk and I driving together. Yeah. And then we knew that you guys had free rooms because it was the first week on the road. Yep. And so we had you guys and a free car. Yep. Which was double good for double, us uh, double whammy yeah yep and then it was like i remember it was either in a walmart or a target we stopped at where both of us headed to the toy section that's all i can remember so i don't remember i remember being in the stands drinking coffee and you the caught, conversations and the conversation and you caught me and matt kind of talking wrestling figures where you like chimed in and we were like oh you collect wrestling figures too and i think that was like Okay, because I thought in my mind been, that that's that, like that the, was, that's the memory I have of how it started. Okay, that because I remember definitely coinciding with very... you and Punk being cheap fucks and wanting to, which also <laughs> there's a couple there's a couple layers to that though because like I was I was a huge CM Punk like fanboy like ROH yeah. like super fan and I want dude I wanted to be just like him man I wanted to like travel up and down the you know the country in my car and work every indie and then eventually go to yeah. you know Puerto Rico Japan this and that. I just got signed at 20 for WWE. It didn't work. It didn't work out the way I envisioned, but it all worked out, you know, and broski, I don't think he ever saw an indie show until he was on one, like two years ago. Um, literally he, <laughs> for some reason, he thought it would be like this cool thing to like, I don't know. He tried to like break Did the you guys punk. work with him in OVW with punk. Oh, no, we never even met him. And then he tried, I think he tried to like 
embarrass me slash break the ice but go he's a big mark for you or whatever right but it like the, the wrist tape but i think it made punk feel safer with us and more like acclimated and then that coincided with him knowing that we were new and had a free car mm-hmm. and free rooms that he was like these guys and then the rest is history you know i see i thought that the the big mark from for you happened down at ovw that happened with cabana he doubled up on it did it again and did it to cabana? cabana yes but in that in that way it backfired again because like at that time it was very strange like we were coming from deep south and we were like definitely outsiders and cabana had just been signed as like this indie guy he was definitely an outsider and we all showed up the same like 10 days and yeah. we all kind of became you know really good friends because of that you know we bonded together and that another thing broski trying to embarrass me all it did was break the ice and make us friends faster you know i just think about it was we would always get a van and just load it <clears> up <throat> of ho- guys today don't understand that like so much fun it, <laughs> it was like, uh, it was like it was, ex- it was a mess it was a mess know? but it was so much and we always had like a revolving fifth or sixth it yeah. was you and Matt was a and lot me of dudes, and Punk man. and Gallows. That was the main and, five. And but Domino have... and Gordy has Best, yep. Armando Estrada. Armando would jump in. It was in. like chaos. The the Charles Barkley picture is still like the most uh, our group night picture ever. Yes, the yes. Night we just randomly met Charles Barkley. He'll never be a, a, uh, <laughs> there's no never be an accurate account of what happened that night no because <laughs> even punk was sober and i don't think he has an accurate depiction because it was just so insane what just went down but and, man but that that picture always like stands out to me of that was just one of our weekend vans and but i would be me in the way way back under bags because we would just stack all the bags in the back of the van on top of me and yeah. then two rooms we would never get more than two rooms i mean i don't know i don't know how we did like once you go to your own room, you can't go back. You are fully like that's what I when it's you wild. got rehired, you were telling me how you were went fully to your own room. And I go, That's not you. Dude, you know, I tried. I, I got back and I'm like, yo, who do you who are you riding with? What do you want to do? And everybody was like, uh, what? We don't do that. We all have Marriott apps and we just do it. I'm like, wait, what? And then once you start doing it, it's like, forget about oh, it. And then the-, the real kicker is once you have kids and it's like, wow, you have this like room to yourself or like oh, okay. quiet and mentality that really was like there's just no turning back you know what i mean i don't want i don't want to go like on the road and be in a room with broski chainsaw snoring next to me like anymore i'm too old for that shit you know? but that's a difference with uh, yeah back then it like, didn't even matter dude we were taking the mattress off beds and using box springs someone and stuff. the box yeah. spring i would and, put- and another little note we should add to this not the people you know, play our little violin here. Not people just feel sorry for us. We're WWE superstars living our dream, but we were not making nearly close to the no. money that guys make nowadays. So it kind of mattered to, to penny pinch like that. I think about that and think about like, man, when I got hired, I thought I saw a WWE contract and I was like, I am a millionaire. I can buy anything oh, I want. Dude, when I was getting 500 bucks I, a week in developmental, I was like, <laughs> this is this it. Is, yeah, I'm rich. I got I'm, it made. Done. I'm done. I'm done. Life's gonna, over. Mayor, Life's over. mayor yeah. of Oshkosh real yeah. quick. Real yeah, fast. Man. I felt the same way, but I was also a kid. I was a child. Yes. <laughs> and you that brings me to you're you're currently at your parents because you're you're renovating the house. Mm-hmm. And are you in the room that I would stay in? Is that the daycare yes, this room? Is, this is the I, yes. <laughs> I'm in a corner of I that room, and that. it's still basically set up like the daycare because my mom ran a daycare of my out of the house as long as forever. I was basically. thinking about that. I was like, yeah. man, I'm gonna inter- I'm, uh, during the interview. It's gonna be in the daycare, and I you said because we were we were on the loop by your where you lived because you were in the apartment at the time with I think the, Papa the, Bear. I call it the frat house. The frat yeah. the frat apartment yeah. with the really huge stairwell. Yes. Into it that I wouldn't yep. I hated because I would always have my bags and I couldn't get up. So when I did stay at your Oh no, 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 you're you're confusing Queens with the frat house. I don't think I was ever at the frat house then. Uh no. I was sick. at the really big wooden stairwell one. Yeah. Where was, the well, stairwell was outside. No, that's that's Queens. Oh, then I don't think I was at the frat house. Yeah, you're the frat house. I now I'm trying to think about it. Maybe you never actually like made you were you just partied in the towns and I dropped you off at my mom's. At mom's. There's another thing because we were to backtrack here. Everyone was so cheap and penny pinching. Yep. We were and whenever we were in this area, I would have guys stay at my parents, stay with me at the frat house, like and just 
there will be all over town basically, but not paying for rubes. That and I just I laughed because he told me it was a night. You told me I was staying at your mom's, but I oh, didn't. No, really I know. Two, two, I know. I know exactly what happened if you want me to get it because I have, go ahead. Was um, unusually sober. So back then, if it was before pay per view, there would be like a combined yep. live event, the on mega Saturday, house show, yep. a house show that leads lead into the Sunday pay per view. So this was Royal Rumble two thousand eight in Madison Square Garden. I'm not going there, but we I love this. I no, but this, then, this even, is also when all all talent would go this to wasn't, the, big, the big I wasn't four. staying at your mom's house for this one. Bro, I'm t- I know exactly what that happened this night. I know exactly everything. And on my account, my memory of it is your a lot recollection's better than yours. way better yes. than mine. So go ahead. Uh so there would be these combined yep. raw and smackdown live events, which was not normally the case. That would be Saturday, maybe Friday, Saturday sometimes, and then yep. Sunday's the pay-per-view. And this is back when Everyone would go to the big four. That was just the thing. Yeah. Because there was plenty of huge pay per views, SummerSlam, for sure, where they're like idiot major brothers at SummerSlam 2007. The Rumble. Because you might uh, be a yeah, Rumble Sur- contestant. Survivor yeah. Series 07. We're not like booked or even considered to be doing anything. Like we're just there, just like doofuses. So then this one is actually the first one that we're with Edge and we're like doing stuff. So instead of like being with my Jabron crew and off, we are on these live events for the first time ever. And it was in Providence, which is pretty far. Rhode Island's a good, like almost four hours from Long Island. But I said, you know what? Everyone's flying into New York. I said, my, my best friend, Papa Bear will take care of you guys. He'll take you out, take you to the local spot, you know, basically by my Slade, the downtown cafe in Glen Cove, New York. I said, he'll take you guys there. So it was you, Gordy Gallows has maybe somebody else, maybe some more people. Punk's not involved in this one. Then we, so bro's going to hit the show, drive all night back. I think I drop him at his parents' house, come to find you guys. No one's against their phone, nothing. I go to downtown and it's like two in the morning and you got, I can't even, you're all zombies, Papa Bear included. (laughs) I mean, like barely getting words out of people, just like out of your minds. I'm now I'm like sober dad mode. <laughs> I collect everybody. I'm doing different shifts in my car, dropping people this way, that way, all over the place, whatever. And then you, I just brought you into my parents' house and just left you in their basement because <laughs> yeah, right. there's, there's a pullout down here. And I just left you down here. And then I went back to my house and never told my parents. So then my never mom told me it wasn't your house. So then my you mom told me it wasn't your house. I did that too. Okay, you probably have no idea that you're not even at my house. There's children's toys around me yes. when I wake up. So that my mom always, my mom has told this story for years because it's not even my story to tell. She said she's just up here at like 7 a.m. reading the paper and having a cup of coffee. And this little person comes up in, in just underwear, just tidy whities <laughs> it, it, it goes, hi, can I have a glass of water? <laughs> Breakfast and coffee. And I go, so that, that's... And I take the water right back down. That's how it all started. I have it in my notes as she would always make me breakfast at the house. Always that, breakfast at the house. That's how it all That's That's how it all Yeah. And I, I, and I, that only, st- I only really have that so detailed because, like I said, I was not, you know, partaking. And your mother things. obviously could, it tells the morning after because she was just woke yes, up to it. I woke up in my, in my apartment or whatever, <laughs> my frat house. I wasn't even there. I thought you were going with <sighs> the other Royal Rumble story. That you've now made famous of oh Royal Rumble. Oh. Where your legs stopped working for a, a day? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to expose you about that? I don't <laughs> my legs don't my legs don't work now. <laughs> like... Yeah, true. That's a different <laughs> so this is this is a precursor. Because <laughs> uh, that right. was at your house house. Your your that no, the... that's that's my uh my first apartment in Queens that, that didn't yes. have the stairs, didn't have the big stairs. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So that was Royal uh, Rumble 2011, 2011, I think. 2011. And you you have been doing jack shit, stealing money for like six months. And then it was like this weird, funny thing where like, I bet you're in this Rumble or whatever. And sure enough, you're in it. You have all these spots, blew up to the wazoo. And then I drove you back another like whatever it was, four hours, Boston to New York or whatever. Were you in that one? So that was funny. Like I'll never forget that I we thought we were. That was the year it was forty. Trent, was it? So me, yeah. But so me Trent, and Trent, right? me and Trent are like the jabrones, and like there's That's the meeting, right. and they said to go, and we're like we're there, just like. Mm. And then 
as he's walking in, I see Michael Hayes and we just happen across paths. And I'm like, Michael, am I in this? He goes, no, but you're doing the dark match with our truth. So I just like homered Simpson to a bush and got out of this two hour meeting. Trent went in and just sat there like a doofus and yep. never, wasn't booked, but he's the only one in the meeting. It wasn't because it would have been who would have been it was Edge the surprise that year. Uh, there were some funny ones. I remember like Kevin Nick. Ash was one. Booker okay. came back at that. But I'm trying to right? think like who wasn't in that meeting that Trent would have been like taking the place of. You know what I mean? I mean, there was no. I mean, I think that's, yeah, yeah. So he's, he he like he's like, come on, man! I set this whole meeting. <laughs> pretty pretty funny, but yeah. Anyway, so then that's back when you do the pay per view Sunday. If you're SmackDown, you're off Monday, but you work Tuesday. So I was like, oh, we'll have like a bro day. Me and Dylan hanging out all day Monday. Toys are us. Go to do eat. It, do all kinds of stuff. No, Dylan is non-functioning. And this isn't like being hung over because there's no alcohol involved in this. This is just like his body did worked so hard in six minutes more than he'd done in six months that it just stopped working the next day i literally like i remember i ordered at one point i like ordered you a pizza and i was like feeding it to you and you were just like dead on the couch like just to try to keep you alive <laughs> good morning you brought me an egg sandwich i remember you brought me an uh, egg sandwich you brought me breakfast you go what are you gonna do i'm gonna go work out i said i don't think i'm gonna go work out today <laughs> shocking i know yeah then you go work out you come back and you go you haven't moved <laughs> I it, don't it know. was like it was like 6 p.m and you hadn't done a thing an entire <laughs> thing it's already like just toast i, I uh, had a long day the day before you know yeah just yeah you had to give uh tyson kid the fu with that one that, that just I'd, that just uh, blew, blew your back out i guess <laughs> I just do a head switch to heath <laughs> and get him out <laughs> this is a long day uh, oh man I thought that's definitely where you were going to bury me initially. No, oh, until that's, I that's a, that's a whole other that's unbelievable. Until I re- remembered the mom one. <laughs> also, that if we want to really backtrack to that night at the downtown, that the, like people still talk about that in my town because I guess apparently they handed you like a bottle of Jaeger and let you walk the bar tops and just pour shots into people's mouths. That's how like turned up it got that so night. So essentially, that. I'm the mayor of that town. As well, in two in uh whatever in January two thousand eight, you were yeah, <laughs> you were the man, fair. yeah. Uh all of this can lead to Team Dad, which I definitely have to hit on. Oh, of man. you, <laughs> you, me, and Kofi, where that riding team seems like it lasted ten years in itself. Yeah, I know. Like just the fun, and it was, con- but it was every weekend. Someone would get the cars, someone would get the hotel, and the other person would either drive or just stay in the pa- in the front seat because I would sleep. Yeah, and Kofi would let you drive because he didn't feel safe. I was fine with Kofi you driving, would, You always would be yeah, okay with me fine. driving. Yeah. I never Kofi, had it. Honestly, Cardona is so dangerous of a driver that like you're like a, a <laughs> dream for me. A dream. Kofi, I drove I, the all the years I've known him, I think I've driven twice. And both times he he's was, cut me off. Yeah, yeah. Like, told me pull over yeah. so he could take over. I've never but, had an issue. Yeah. Well, a lot of the time you're in my car, where I can fully reach the pedal. I've realized, compared to a rental where okay. it's sure. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, but Team Dad was something that we kind of monikered over. We would be out to eat, and I had my child, and right after that, Kofi had his first child. So we would make our dad calls during our meals and we would or we would sit down to eat at Denny's. We would order and we would both almost literally same time. Like we were nodding at each Bro, other. It was like we, a rib that I wasn't in on every time. We, we would just get up and part. And you would be sitting there alone and every meal. And there was plenty of them where it was like the food was there and then we'd get back and then we'd all. Yeah. And this would be there alone like, the whole time. This is way prior to one. I'm, this is me, like no girlfriend, nothing. Like I have no yeah. one to call, nothing to do. Uh, this is prior to like your phone having like every cool app or something to do. I'm literally just sitting there, like, what the hell am I supposed to do? Stirring These guys, your ice, just, stirring just your literally ice just <laughs> sipping on a glass of water for 20 minutes, and then you guys come back. Oh, I'm glad that was good time for you guys. <laughs> but the 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 greatest thing was receiving the text from you to Kofi and I saying, "Hey guys," it was literally like, "Hey guys." Can I be a part of Team Dad? <laughs> Can I finally be in Team Dad after all these yeah. years? And it was, yeah. and it was that was the coolest way to kind of break the ice to us. Uh, how did that? It's literally a big part of my notes. How do you feel? Because that you would have been 
you weren't back, correct? When you you had you guys had Mackenzie? It's, it's right when I no. What we find out is it's probably like right when I come back. When you do go back, yeah. So you were back on the road completely. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Do you feel that that was harder than it is now with your schedule now, or just kind of take? It's kind of a different way to look at parenting from our perspective. You know, being on the road so much as a parent compared to the usual nine to five. Um. Yeah, it was a big change for sure. Like, um, like Liz is my best friend, the love of my life. But like when I'm on the road, I don't. I miss her, but I don't like. It's hard to explain, but I miss my kids in a different way, where it's like painstaking. If that makes any sense, does that make yeah. any sense? Yep. Um. Yeah, it was just a different vibe after all these years of wrestling and being on the road, and then having that feeling. It was just weird. It just hit me out of nowhere. It's like very strange. And when you're new to that WWE schedule and you're doing it full time, I mean, dude, four days, four shows a week, two of those are travel. Like it's it's a lot, man. You know, um, you really have 48 hours at home if you're hitting it hard and running it. And that whole last run, I really was like, it was the opposite of the first one where like I was sitting home doing nothing. This one I was used like so much. And um, so that part was rewarding, like career wise. But I was sad about I've missed a lot of like my friends' weddings and you know, birthday parties. I don't know if I've ever even still been home on one of my kids, like real birthdays, you know, we on just the kinda, day. Yeah. I think we kind of, <laughs> really? you know, make up for it at, for parties and celebrate on other days or days in a home and stuff. Yeah. My anniversary, forget about it. It's just, it all kind of, but that's, that's the business. You, I tell my students all the time, you can't be this mega successful pro wrestler. If you don't leave your hometown, you know what I mean? It's just not the you way it works. Almost make, you you get used to making a separate like a dad anniversary or a dad here's the birthday party with dad you know what i mean where you get to used me, to they're, that they're, and they're important but they're just days of the week you know what i mean i'm still right. gonna you know love them with all my heart and want to celebrate them every day you know then you when you got released was that with mackenzie or uh, uh madison you you had her and then released or was Liz still did you guys not have her yet? pregnant when we got let go okay and she was and born in that in that summer of 2020 amid, after amidst, release. amidst covid very different yes. situation. <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah where you're home all the time yeah we were scared it was they had like kind of just changed the rules where I was there at one point like the height of covid the the you know partner wasn't even Couldn't allowed in, in there I know yeah. so we were sweating that one out but I was allowed to be in there at least they changed the rules okay yeah, that's that's so I had with Landon, I was on the road fully, fully for his early years in the last seven years. It's been weekends, you know, yeah. and so it's been awesome where it's I get that time with him during the week. Like yeah. and, and obviously he's at school now during the day. So it's like it, I you and I talked about the other day. You were like well, bored. I'm bored during the day because the girls are at school and I'm just home. So it's just a different mindset now as a yeah. parent. And it's, it's just on the flip side, that's like, you know, being a wrestler, that's where like my parenting is, is that yeah. Monday through Friday, I'm like super dad, you know, doing yep. everything I can do, yeah. you know? Yeah. That was something actually uh dreamer talked to me a lot about before I had Landon and fit about all their times on the road with raising kids at home. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine without cell phones and without the FaceTime constantly. Yeah, that, we can, that's crazy. Right? We can raise our kids on yeah. the road still and still yeah. see the first words and the steps and all of that pretty instantly. Yeah. I mean, every time I am away, I do. I can FaceTime and I FaceTime with Liz and the girls and talk to them. So I couldn't imagine living without that. You know, it'd be pretty nuts. Pulling sad. over. It would be sad. Pulling, yeah. Pulling yeah. over to for a payphone. Yeah. And the wonder of that's yeah. even, can you imagine that crazy like the just, one th and the hope that someone's there to pick up like if you catch them at the right time or if they need to get a hold of you yeah right. how does that happen to, to your beeper I don't know yeah uh so I was thinking also about then during your first run you know re your release run you hitting the indies with both both feet running as they say or whatever hitting the ground running and the friends you made so easily. And how you got in with so many promotions just because you're you, I feel. And yeah. people just accepted you as you wanted to work hard. You 
would bust your ass and you were fun to be around. Um, and then transferring that to when I got released, you putting your name out there for as well, because I think you knew that I would be fun to be here and you wanted to be around me too. We wanted to be around each other when yeah. I was released. And then like the AIWs and all of that, we're, we're wrestling fans. Deep down, mm-hmm. we're wrestling fans. We love wrestling. So these yeah. promotions that we can go to that are wrestling, it's fun for us. I I never stopped loving wrestling. And then, like we kind of touched on earlier, like I loved it every shape and form that I found. You know, I, I just I found tapes of Mexican those... wrestling. I was like, what's this? I found ECW. I'm like, holy shit, what's this? You know, I everything. In, indies, forget it. When I found Indies, I was like, because it was so up close and so personal. And I yeah. could go to these shows and literally like, bug simon diamond and chris candido and ask some questions and talk to them face to face like it was just like a dream come true for me so and and that coincides with that the end of the wwe run i don't even know i'm like they weren't booking me and i was dying to wrestle and dying to, to get out there so it was like it was one of those things and Corano called me to fire me i was like oh thank god and i literally worked that was a thursday i worked friday saturday and I'll never forget, my parents had like a little barbecue or something <laughs> Sunday. And I remember sitting there and just like, I just had like, I was just so happy. And I was so happy that I had just wrestled these like, basically like shindies in New Jersey and yeah. in front of, you know, 200 something people. But I was just so happy. Like I had been wrestled. I had fun. I had some cash in my pocket. I'm like, this is going to be great because this is still what I love to do. It doesn't matter, you know, and I knew that it would all work out. And then you kind of like said, I just, I just love wrestling so much. And I think, I think when you meet me or you're around me, that kind of, you know, spills out of me. So when you're like-minded people like that, you know, like, like Biggins and Thorne and people like that, you know, it just comes out and, you know, like Ethan Page who wrote me a cold email one day and said, I want you to come to my weird indie in Canada. And I'm like, what the hell is this guy talking I about? I got that through Thorne <laughs> to me. <laughs> I didn't even get, the, I didn't even get the Thorne heads up on who he was yeah. or anything. Yeah, it also says like Julian Mishkovich or whatever, and then like <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't, even, I really had no clue who he was, you know. So, um, yeah, and then then that t- spawned into it, like you know, coming back multiple times and being the champ and becoming friends with him, and you know, meeting Josh Alexander for the first time, you know, wrestling him tons of times. So, yeah, it's just uh, it doesn't matter to me if it's wrestling, I'm happy. You know what I mean? And that, with that, that's why, I, I mean, when you got released, it was a bummer, obviously, because you lost that that main job. But also, I was like, man, I wasn't on the road at the time. I was just running ACW shows. Oh, I can bridge, bring him in and hang out with him and Dreamer for the weekend? This is the best. And then yeah. our crowd instantly fell in love with you. And it was like, oh, oh, that was easy. That was really fun. And you had a banger with Avalon immediately. And... The building, I remember the heat was out in the building that day, the in the Masonic Center. Man, so it was that was so cold. It was I so bad. And you ran a seminar that day. That was with the cold. Students. It was so cold. Yeah. And, but it was. I was, I was about to cut Bauer open and go inside of him for one. <laughs> like, like the Star Wars. Like, thing. like the scene in Star Wars. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but now, like, <laughs> so then you go back. And then you're you you guys get released again, and then it was instantly like, "Yep, we need Hawkins back again." And it was you're now a mainstay in Oshkosh, which is crazy in itself too, because it's like, "Oh, we have an anniversary show. Oh, uh, let's just bring Brian in. Oh, there's a con. We need him there." The fans have been awesome. That dude, that first day I saw that building, I'm like, "This is like an ECW building." I fell fell in love with that building. Avalon and I just like uh, immediately had like he's probably one of my favorite opponents ever really I mean yeah. uh you know we just immediately had chemistry hit it off and have never not had a match that I literally I don't think we've ever had one that's not top tier you know what I mean we've always yeah. really like, yeah really gone it, in and had a good one it's just fun and it goes back to the thing of you're not one to call it in for a house show match on any show you I do, just, I, I can't. It's and not. You just don't have me. it in you. Yeah, you don't have in it in me. you. Yeah, no in matter me. the show. Yeah. Um, has that always been throughout both of your indie runs? You know, your your post WWE runs. That's always kind of been your mind and mentality too. Of hey, I'm not going to be the the guy that just does it for. You I know, just to, can't. Kind of it's just um, I don't know, man. I just I I love it so much, and I think it's such a privilege to do what we do, and it's such a 
wild way to make a living i just can't imagine not like i'm gonna get on this flight go to this place and then not give it my Kill best it. i know that, and yeah. that, and that honestly that goes with, with anything in life you know what i mean if it's worth doing it's worth doing right into the best of your abilities right exactly exactly that's mm-hmm. that's and you've done that to me where i just at times want to go and bite an ass and you go no we're but doing things that, we're doing things let's, tonight let's not put this full spin on it but there's also times now in my in my wisdom let's say where i'm like okay we don't need to jump yeah. off this balcony here for no you know what i mean i'm yep. smart in that sense for sure certainly yeah but it's never it's never lazy ne- never anywhere near lazy which i'm proud of all right as we wrap up a couple things we need to talk about I asked you to pen uh, a forward to my uh, my autobiography, and it was one of those things where they asked me. The publishing company asked me, "Who who can we get to write your forwards?" And it was immediately, "I want two of them." It was you and Kofi, mm-hmm. and I was like, and "They were they put up a little bit of a fight," and I was like, "Guys, I'm not putting this book out if it's anyone else but Brian and Kofi. It needs mm-hmm. to happen." And I, okay. So then I ask you guys to do it and I go, I don't want to see these until it comes out. That was a huge thing for me. Yeah. So when I finally got the physical copy was the first time I ever saw them and I'm reading them and I'm going, Oh, Brian's is like this heartfelt thing. The most like very, very special. And Kofi's just shits on me. It's a roast. It's good. It's a roast. (laughs) Yeah. I get the text from you guys and I say, guys, I am literally tears in my eyes reading these from laughing and from heartfelt <laughs> for two different reasons. Uh, <laughs> so the soda free loader. It was that, but did you doing that? Was it did you feel a pressure to do it? Or did you immediately go, hey, I'm gonna uh, I, I just feel like it was very, very special to me. Uh, approaching you guys about it yeah i'm it's dude something i never knew that you i never i'm such a you guys to have fanboy from wrestling books and it's an absolute dream of mine to one day i'll write my own and yeah uh maybe a couple even but so when you asked me that i'm like this rules of course this would be like a thrill of a lifetime for me an honor so yeah that that was a no-brainer for me and then i mean i could have went the roast route but i knew it would live on forever and i feel <laughs> forever? Like, yeah and <laughs> I mean that that one time you pitched a fit about paying for a two dollar nineteen cent soda. Do I really need to bring that up in this forward? I don't, you know. But it made it so good that it yours was, was pretty so nuts. nice. Yeah. Yours was so nice, and his yeah, I do so like nice. that you got the the, the yeah. balance. Yes, you know. Uh, the other the, the other thing, and another thing I, I could put I could put over that book too. It's one of my favorite wrestling books, and I've read I've read about ninety percent of them out there. But thanks. your I always That's, think I keep telling people now yours and the Young Bucks are the only like modern tale like the only tales of like our generation that's out there like that in book form okay that's only you yeah there isn't there aren't and really every, everyone else is a different generation like it's you guys only that's really oh out i guess i never thought about that speaking for our generation and I, I i thought that was pretty cool yeah there haven't been a lot of current and like guys mean... like our age and our era, yeah there's no one else yeah huh. yet Exactly. Uh, the the other the last thing I really want to hit on for story what for story time is the infamous video. There's a lot of videos of me falling, but probably one of the most infamous is at a very special day of yours, uh, your wedding day, mm-hmm. and how it immediately got twisted. The video got twisted. Yeah. Of it was. Uh, I mean, and all. I mean, it could have been believed. Of why I would have fallen down the stairs. Yeah, of course. But you can you can go ahead with that one. Well, <laughs> if, if you watch it through a worker's eye, you see that you take a spectacular like pro wrestling bump. Yes. It's not that's like the the smoking gun of evidence that you're not you know belligerent <laughs> and making a fool of yourself. And there's also the view. I have the video of my view where it's set up like we know you're gonna do it. And yeah. it was basically a rib of my wife's friend, who is very short, not actually a small person, but damn near close yep and we were like well they gotta walk together they're almost the same height ha 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 and then just to you know really mortify her we're like what if dylan takes a a bump 
down the stairs like as they're so let me, let me also paint the picture it's like two staircases that meet down the middle and turn into one and then the the party walks together so like you know obviously liz and i are at the top and we're last and then everyone goes together so me and tyson kidd are they're cackling and laughing and filming and then you went and took this picture perfect it, bump but it was an immediate um, hey you want to fall down the stairs Sure. Yeah. Like, and if you watch it, like you slap out, like it's perfect. It's safe. <laughs> but like to, to civilians and the 300 people there, whatever, like, holy shit. You know, they, they looked spectacular. Um, but yeah. And then uh, our friend Phil, who was in attendance, also filmed it, put it out there. And then the internet spun into oh, there it goes. Dylan I proceeded off the wagon to again. get a message from yeah. talent relations <laughs> asking about my displays at your wedding. Yeah, and how I should be embarrassed. So that was something Mis- I, I, misunderstanding. No big deal. And it yeah. um, it was pop of a lifetime. I mean, I have the video. You could hear I don't, the little laughter you can hear on the video coming at Tyson Kidd is like next level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's got this this laugh that he's shoot cackling. Yeah, he's cackling. Out. Yeah, that's one of the biggest he ever let yeah. out. Yeah. All right. So currently, you have the podcast, but also you just re-signed with Impact. Mm-hmm. which is amazing. Uh, what are your thoughts going forward with impact? What are um, your, what's on your, your, your board? I, I just have really enjoyed my time there. You know, they've given me the opportunity to be me that like, I really haven't got in my career. So I'm appreciative yep. of that. You know, um, Jimmy Jacobs, Robert Evans, they, do it like an awesome job and they care and they write the show and put so much effort into it. And it's one of those things I wish more people saw impact and would give it a chance. Cause I do think it's a really good wrestling show. And I think it's different than like the other options you have out there. You know what I mean? I think it's got a little bit of something for everybody, but as for me and my goals, I want to be the impact heavyweight champion and no, you know, that's it. No if fans or butts about it. I feel like I've been such a workhorse for them for the past two and a half years. And I put in my time and I'm trying to prove, to myself and to them that, you know, I'm the complete package. Like if I'm, I'm it, you know, as far as the guy to represent the company, I think I'm the guy to do it. I'm the one who's out there doing interviews like this. I'm the one who's out there, you know, successful beyond wrestling. And, uh, I'm proud of that. And I think that, um, you know, I'm in the prime of my career and, uh, it's time to strike. That, that is something that I can't wait to finally happen of you to have that moment with uh that major with a major title with that major title and to be able to represent a company because exactly what you said you have you you take every platform whether it be social media or the podcast or just interviews or media anything and you really run with it every time and you've always been a guy to do any public thing possible to put your brand out there yeah and that's just what i think that that's the day and age we're living in. I said this in another interview, like I don't think wrestling fans really invest in you as like a TV personality anymore. I think they invest in you as a person because our lives are just so out there with social media and these interviews we all do and everything that I think my fans have invested in Brian Myers, the human and they're rooting for me too. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's not just, I and that's why I think I think people get behind us no matter if your character is hated on the show, they're still going to line up at the table and they're still, and they they know you're doing a good job of being disliked. Yeah. And being a bad guy and it's appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think, you know, people think, okay, famous day. And maybe that's true, but I think there's better and more honest opportunity out there for everybody. Right. Don't insult the fans, you know, for like in wrestling, it's a show. It's like going to the movies, man. Enjoy it for what it is. Like who you like, dislike who you don't like, you know. That's, that's what it's all about. Just 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 spend money and cheer and boo. That's all we're asking. When you ha- and I have our children at the merch table and there is no issue, I love that fact. And it makes me so happy. Like, yeah, they get to enjoy. Like you when you brought your daughter to the table and she was signing autographs and doing a meet and greet, it yeah. made me so happy. I was like, oh, I'm not. I'm not the only one doing this now. This is makes me ha- really happy because well, to I would be honest, bring my biggest, my biggest fear is that she's just going to stop liking wrestling like tomorrow. And then, yo, like, it's it. uh, Landon. Whenever Landon like shows a glimmer of like falling out, like yeah. going straight into something, I was like, 
oh no, this is it. This is the end. And that's then I have I've, to go, hey, that's how I've this, this literally cool. felt for eight months now, or however long, seven months, however long it's been going on. It's never so, wanting it to happen. And I think, I think Liz might be getting a little sick of it, but I, I just, I'm li- terrified that she's going to just be like, oh, this is stupid and be done. One and then, day, honestly, completely out. Wrestling fans are wrestling fans and they never go like, but they grow out of it. like a lot of people, they don't realize this. You meet people in the street and they're like, oh, you're a wrestler? Yeah, I liked it. Like, and it's like something you like for a short period of time in your life and then you move on. And then if you're a diehard like us, you, it sticks with you forever and it's a passion that's different. But the common person, it's like the way you're I like Power out. Rangers. When I, I like Power Rangers yeah. for a year when I was a kid. That's it. I moved on. <laughs> yes. You know, like that's fine, you know, and that's, I think that's a lot more common. So I'm just scared that it's going to be a, a passing phase. This is say. a fad. Yeah. yeah. All right, pal. I, I, no, I also got to say it's more exciting now how far women's wrestling has come as a female. For like, she can really. Me. It's not the ninety-seven to two thousand two era where it's crazy. She, like she, what could she make, could. What? Yeah. I mean, I, that last run in WWE, dude. I was at all those live events. Like, the people came to see a lot of the women, and yeah. they get mass. Some of the biggest pops on the show, and then like merch sales. Like, it's a whole new world, and I think that's really cool. And it makes her feel okay to be a fan of women's wrestling. That too. Yes. It's, it's, just like it's, the major wrestling podcast makes you feel okay to like wrestling figures. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, <laughs> yes, I I have to, that was going to be the closing to this. We haven't hit on the major podcast very much, but that's because if you're listening to this, 90% of you know that's what we revolve around is the major wrestling figure podcast. Um Thank you for the opportunities with that. Again, thank you for uh, making, and I'm sure so many people tell you daily, you guys fully made being a fan of toys okay. Yeah. Like, you one guys made most, it my, One cool of my most, most proud things I've ever done in my life, you know? It was, it, was, it, was, it was literally me and Matt's, like, deepest, darkest secret. I remember you saying that so much, like, especially in, you guys... Was it in developmental where you guys were doing the classics? Oh, every dude, but, we would hide it from dude. I remember what the, I might have told the story. I remember being at like uh, Walmart, like late night with Matt, and we we're like cruising for figures. And I saw Mike Knox, and he saw me, and I like threw the like figure I had, like <laughs> pretending like I didn't have it. Like, what's up, man? Like, just literally threw it like in some aisle <laughs> to not get caught that I had like this game figure in my hand or whatever that was. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> now everyone, I feel like everyone in your circle. I, and out, out, outsourced is like they it's acceptable to be okay with collecting figures and maybe not even collecting everything but collecting your own like and that's okay finally and because yeah. you have to be a fan you're like yeah. we did this it's okay we it's played okay with them as kids fan. that's what got us into this yeah yeah that, in that, all reality those i don't care who you are sentimental childhood things make you feel good that's just human nature man and that's okay to embrace that you know yeah hey i had this when i was a kid and for whatever reason having it now makes me feel good that's cool that's fine it's the stuffed animal that lives on and on and on that's literally what it is and it's okay all right pal hit your plugs what are we plugging what do you have coming up there's too much i'm actually proud to announce that i had that weekend blocked off for something that didn't happen and i don't want to i don't need to go into detail about that but i have a weekend off i'm gonna go to eric james's royal rumble party at his house okay. uh we got boozing with the toys if you're uh majormarks.com you can join us with the infamous boozing with the toys on the 26th on that thursday night can um, i demand that boozing with the toys goes back to more purchases like there i feel like boozing needs to go back to i Crazy I agree. Purchase. I agree. But we just get caught up in like whatever we're the gosses and we yeah. just never get to it, you know, but I do agree. The, the concept of boozing with the toys was to get a that, little, those first couple, get a little liquor. I mean, were, it's always nuts. entertaining. Don't get me wrong. It's always entertaining, but get a little, little, little sauced up and make some liquid courage purchases on eBay between yeah. me, me, Matt, Mark, and our fans. And it, it's always a good time. Majormarks.com. I got too much stuff to plug, but let's just leave it at that. Perfect. Well, as Ricky Morton late night at a bar told us. That was a great night. <laughs> I have that picture. Uh, and it came up on my, on my phone the other day and I was just smiling. Guys, I always tell you I love you. I always tell everyone I love you. 
because I never know when I'm not going to see him anymore. <laughs> I was like, this is the most heartfelt thing that Ricky yeah. Morton has ever said to us. Pretty awesome. And then, yeah, it just, it, he is one of my favorites for a lot of things. And, and that that's one of the main, and, and then we talked to Deborah McMichael for an hour and that was awesome too. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, pal. <laughs> Love you too, Dylan. Uh. Guys, let me talk to you about our friends over at Manscaped, bringing you the absolute best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped makes precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. The performance package is the ultimate bundle in men's hygiene. Join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for our listeners. 20% 20% off and free shipping worldwide when you use promo code SWOGGLE at manscaped.com. That's promo code SWOGGLE at manscaped.com for 20% off your order and free shipping. Wait, if my math is correct, 7 million men carry the two... That's 14 million balls. All right. Well, that was a hell of a talk. Thanks, pal. I, uh, I I sincerely have to thank Brian for taking time uh, out of his crazy, crazy schedule from his his wife and his kids and his pro wrestling school and answering all of Matt's demands to uh, sit down, <laughs> sit down and have a chat with me and just two pals yuck it up. And once again, man. That was fun. I, I really, really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, but for now, it's time for plugs. Guys, please check out ProWrestlingTees.com slash Swoggle. Check it out. We have podcast shirts. We have Inside Joke shirts. We have Landon's Cow Chicken Nugget shirt. And we have all of my independent wrestling shirts available over at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Swoggle. Then, while you're at it, while you got your browser open, head over to youtube.com slash Dylan Postle. Hit the like button. Smash the notification bell. Subscribe and leave a comment. It always helps us so much All when you do all of those things. Uh, then, next Monday and next Wednesday, we will see you live on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Dylan Postle. And finally... Swaggleauction.com. Sign up. Get $10 free. $10 for absolutely free to use on every whatnot stream. Any whatnot stream. Not every. Any whatnot stream you would like. I have a magic candle burning right now, George. It is the Pandora scent. It is the uh, passage or passage, whatever. It's the damn flight of passage scent. Guys, head over to Magic Candle Company. If you are a Disney fan like George and myself are, head over to magiccandlecompany.com. Use promo code SWOGGLE and save yourself some money on these incredible candles. I swear by them. I send them for gifts. I, I, I literally cannot recommend these enough. If you're missing the parks, if you have an upcoming trip to the parks, if you had just got home from the parks, these just remind you of everything you love about the Disney parks, about the Disney resorts, about the Universal resorts, everything. I love Magic Candle Company. I don't like candles. I don't like them 90% of the time because they smell like food. Everyone gets a candle that smells like food or like pine or burning wood. I don't want a fire smell. George, if I want something that smells like a fire, you know what I'll do? I'll light a damn fire. No one wants that. All right. All right. Uh, And then this is usually the part where Dylan yells at me to plug my shit, but uh, there was a brief uh, moment of silence, so I'm going to jump in and do it now. Uh, I have another (laughs) podcast. It is called the Game Marks Podcast. It is myself, former Create a Pro champion, Johnny Clash, and we break down. There you go. And we break down a different wrestling video game each and every week, doing deep dives into the roster, uh, the story, and everything in between. And uh, we are on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. And we also have a pro wrestling tea store, pro wrestling tees.com slash Game Marks Pod. And we would very much appreciate if you checked us out. 
Um, you can go and listen to the whole archive, or you can just listen to your favorite video game episodes, whichever you choose. That's why we do this podcast. But with that, Dylan, that's it. Hey, Alexa. I was waiting for Landon to yell at me and go, if we don't have one of those once again. <laughs> the other day, he was cold. <laughs> Guys, we're real quick. Again, the real quick Landon quote thing. <laughs> we were wrapping up the episode, George. We were so close. We were so close. I was just about to tell you to do the signature <laughs> sign off. Well, I guess Literally. technically this really is your signature sign off. <laughs> All we needed to do was say that. <laughs> you needed, I needed a thumbs up and a thanks. And that was it. Lana was really, Lana was cold in bed one the other night, and he goes, "Tech, you turn up the humid the the thermostat." <laughs> I go, yeah. Let's go. Hey Alexa, turn up the thermostat. Well, we don't have one of these. He goes, "Dad, that's not working. That's not working." I don't know if that's a bad joke or a dad joke or a bad oh, dad joke. No. It's just it's just me being a prick to him once again. It's just me being a prick. <laughs> Is that the title of the parenting book? <laughs> parenting for pricks by Dylan Postel. Life short and I'm a prick. <laughs> <sighs> well, Dylan, signature sign off. Do your thing. <sighs> Hey guys, Magic Candle Company is the best way to bring your favorite vacation scents to your home. The smell of a tropical beach, dark water ride, a cruise ship, or even a water park. The Magic Candle Company is the best way to bring those nostalgic and iconic scents from your favorite vacation spot to your home. Visit magiccandlecompany.com and use code SWAGGLE to save 15% on your whole order and bring the magic home today.